So another piece of that iPhone 12 Pro puzzle kind of fell into place with some leaks that have come out recently, and it's pretty interesting, but not overall surprising. And we're gonna talk about it in this video. So Forbes recently did a quick article about the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max that are coming out and what's gonna be different between that model and just the regular iPhone 12 models that are gonna be hitting the market. The 12 models are basically your entry level models and the Pro models are just that, the Pro models. So normal with the differentiating factors of the iPhone regular models versus the Pro models, you're dealing with probably a better camera and a better screen. Most of the internals always kind of remain the same. You always get pretty much the same processor, the same RAM, but you're gonna get a better screen overall and a Pro level camera when you upgrade to those Pro models. With the iPhone 12, it's gonna be a little bit different. So what Apple's doing this time is that they're going to be differentiating the Pro models from the regular models by giving giving the Pro models six gigs of internal RAM versus four gigs of internal RAM with the entry level iPhone models. And that is something new, actually. Again, normally their internals are pretty much the same across the board and the hardware is a little bit different, but now there's gonna be a distinct difference between the Pro models and the regular models. And I can't say I'm too surprised looking at it from a business standpoint. Because if you really think about it, it's getting more and more difficult for cell phone manufacturers to kind of differentiate the models that they're putting out on the market. And in another video, I said, you have to have something that you can kind of put on the box. It's gonna show a consumer why you should choose this model over this model. And I think that's what Apple's kind of leaning towards. Now, for the average person, four gigs of RAM is probably gonna be more than enough. And the current iPhones have four gigs of RAM, and it's not like iPhones are slow to begin with. They're usually pretty well optimized for iOS and just pretty well optimized to run in general. So I don't think the average user that's gonna pick up four gigs of RAM on the regular iPhone is gonna know, oh my God, I'm missing two extra gigs of RAM. I should have gotten the Pro Max. But this stark difference is something that Apple can kind of throw on the box. So you can actually imagine a scenario where Apple's gonna go, well, this Pro model costs X amount of money because it's more efficient than the other model that's currently on the market. So this model is for pro users, so we're going to charge a pro price. And as a consumer, I never wanna pay more money. So again, as a consumer, I can understand how this is kind of a sucky thing, but from a business standpoint, I can see why Apple's definitely doing it. But one of the other concerns I have is by presenting this stark contrast between the two phones, are you gonna see kind of a bigger jump in the price gap between the two phones? There really wasn't too much of a price gap between the non-pro and pro models, but now that they can actually put that the pro model operates better, it has a better camera, it'll have a better display, I think they're gonna actually start attaching an even larger pro price to the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max models that are gonna be hitting the market. It just seems more cohesive for them to not only change the way they're modeling the two phones, but also change the pricing structure of the phones as well. I guess only time will tell if they're gonna go down that route, but it just seems like it's something that they would do. And I wouldn't be surprised if you're going to see this kind of structure just kind of radiate a little bit more through the cell phone market. You're going to see companies now fully distinguishing their budget to mid-range models versus their non-mid-range models. And it's going to be something different than cameras and screens going forward. I think a lot of normal consumers will pick up a phone and not care about the camera that much or not care about the screen as much either if you're not directly comparing it to another phone, you don't really realize the screen's that bad. But again, something you can put on the box that says this one, processor speed performance is better than this one is something that you can charge more for and it's something that would make an average consumer stop and think maybe i should get the best one if i'm gonna spend all this money anyway maybe i should go all in and buy this one versus that one it's something that those salespeople at the phone stores can pitch to customers versus this one it's a lot easier to pitch a better overall performance than it is just to pitch a better camera to someone who doesn't take that many pictures so I really do, again, see this from a business standpoint as Apple just saying, we're going to make sure that you know the Pro model is Pro because it performs better and it has a better camera and a better screen, but we're going to make sure you know it's Pro and we're going to charge you a Pro price 
for it versus just, you know, it's kind of pro. It's got a better camera, but it does operate the same. So if you don't take pictures, you can just go with this one. It's a good idea, but again, I'm a little frightened to see what the price gap is going to be between the two. It may or may not be larger, but I passed the question off to you guys. Does this really matter? Does it concern you? Does knowing that one phone is going to have four gigs and the other one's going to have six change what phone you would purchase? Would this now make you go for the Pro Max because it's going to have more gigs and be a, essentially a better overall performance? Comment in the comment section down below the video. And while you're down there, you know what to do. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that like button and let YouTube know that this was a pretty good video and you enjoyed it. And you hit that subscribe button lets us know that you enjoyed the video and what we're doing on this channel and that bell pretty important because it's the only way you guys are going to know when we release some cool helpful content like this one until next time guys you can check out a new review we did on the beats solo pro they're actually a pretty good set of headphones if you're looking for some headphones to go with your new iphone 12 or the iphone that you currently have check that review out right there and, and i'll also throw up something that youtube believes you'd enjoy watching and thanks again so much for checking out the video and as always make sure to stay safe and until next time peace out